Yo, what's going on guys? It's me, the Ninja Reviewer here. Welcome to my review of My Hero Academia Season 2, Episode 11. That is 1-1 one, one of My Hero Academia. The day has come! Yeah, the My Hero Academia. This week's episode of Season 2, Episode 11. Basically, uh, we are wrapping up most of the Sports Festival Tournament arc. We're just about to wrap things up. Uh, right now, we have the final fight that's about to happen next week, which, of course, uh, to the finals. But I will explain most of this episode going in. And the awesome setup, the awesome entrance to Stain. Yow! I love Stain. This dude, when I first read this in the manga, I was like, holy Jesus. Like, this dude... Now, I remember just not getting into the manga for the first time. And that's the same dude that we saw way back at the very end of season one. Like that little glimpse shot that we saw. And he's like there and he has like the, like the ninja outfit. And he's fucking chilling and shit in the shadows. Yes. So we do get the reveal of this newest character. Or should I say this newest uh, villain. We're going to be getting in the next arc in the second half of the season. Coming next month or probably yeah definitely next month or whatever or even sooner than that. So, really looking forward to that. I am super excited for uh, the next ha second half of the season. I'm really excited, especially for some other new characters. We're going to another new character we're going to meet along the way. That's going to be very important to Midoriya's development of his One for All quirk. So, we have that coming up as well. So, that's going to be pretty exciting. But let's just jump in right into the episode. So, basically, uh, this episode uh, focuses on Midoriya trying to heal up. And the uh, recovery girl says the problem is that your bones are not going to heal like I normally do. Since you went over uh, further beyond of your powers, we're going to have to do a little surgery. But it's not going to be a really serious surgery. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a serious surgery where I will have to use my powers of medical skills, my, my advanced medical sc uh, skills quirk, to heal your bones a little more quicker for you to walk and stuff. Um, you will be cured, but it will take a while for that due to of you going all out. And she was kind of upset at all night. And he's like, well, don't worry about it. He goes like, well, look, that is something that you actually did. He goes, look, don't feel bad. You basically did this for a total rookie's sake. For him to actually show off his true powers. For him to actually show what he can do without the needs of his father. To use the power of his own without worrying about parents' uh about parents them putting a destiny on their child which is actually really good and i'm really glad that midoriya actually did that to gain total rookie some huge character development where he says like look i don't need to think of, i don't need to have you in my mind i don't need you in my life about this other side of the cork i could just use this on my own free will whenever i seek fit or whenever i used to or when i really need to use it the most that's when i'll use it until then it's like look i'll just conceal it for now without without you know worrying about like you or anybody else or etc so that's basically really good on total rookies part now we have um oh before we get to the actual fights itself we do have one other important information on this episode is that we found out just like midoriya was when he was corkless so was all might all might was also a courtless a corkless human as well he basically didn't have any powers himself until somebody passed it down to him which is the power of one for all so with that he became uh, the mentor of the master of one for all and he has become the all might that we know of today so that is a little fun fact he even did see that yes i did uh, all might actually said yes i do see a younger a younger self a younger me back then but this time you expand even from what i have done back in my younger days so that is actually really cool how he's inspired him as the young one of today so that was actually pretty cool so we got that development which is actually really nice and very interesting development and this is very important because you'll find out in the second half of the season not gonna really spoil it um exactly don't worry you will meet this person who did give 
this powers as well. You will meet this person. We will get to that in the second half in the next arc. But for now, I do want to talk about the fight. We got the rest of the fights. Wrapping up, we have Tenya versus... Uh, shit, what was her name? Shiozaki, that was her name. So, it was Shiozaki versus Tenya. And Tenya pretty much outwit uh, um, Shinzaki with um, his actual speed. And he actually pretty much took her out with ease, which is, like, weird. Because, obviously... Because it's, it's like, kind of weird how basically he just took on, like, Kaminari, like, that quickly, like, like that, and then Tenya was able to do the same thing, and it's like, dude, Tenya is actually making games compared to you, Kaminari, where you at, fool, like, come on, you could have easily found a way to the fear if you weren't trapped by her beauty, you know, all about women looking all sexy as hell, just saying, so then basically, we did have that fight going on, and it looks like he was trying to get in contact with his bigger brother, but that is going to be a problem. Uh, and I will explain... Oh, well, actually, no. During while he was calling his brother, apparently his older brother was attacked by a villain. And his name is the... He is known as the Hero Killer, and his name is Stain. Like I said, at the beginning of this review, the reveal of Stain was awesome. I do like the voice that they actually chose. Uh, for the English dub as well. He sounds actually very menacing and he sounds exactly like the character that I imagine him to be, which is kind of odd because I thought I'll be watching this more in Jap first, but watching this in English dub is like, whoa. Yeah, and the dub himself, he sounds actually really good as well. And I think I recognize that voice too. Like, I'm trying to remember exactly that voice. I'm just trying to remember exactly who he's trying to sound like. Uh, but regardless though, uh, I really do like Stane's voice. I think he just sounds just as imitating as I would think he is, so that's actually really cool. But then meanwhile, we have the other fights we want to talk about, which was, um, we had the fight, uh, we had the fight between Bakugo versus, uh, Kirishima, and I was like, oh, man, I was a, a little bit salty that Kar I remember this in the manga, but, I mean, it really sucks for my boy, Kirishima. I love you, man, but Bakugo, man, is the one that definitely got you on the top tier, because obviously, you don't have that hidden potential, Yet, but oh man, the manga. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I don't want to spoil that though. But oh my god, like, this is just the beginning, man. You, I, you will see later on, in Kirishima, how awesome he will really become later in the series. But yeah, the fight itself was just basically Bakugo Kirishima, and I'll see uh, Kirishima trying to get advantage of his hardening in order to actually have enough strength uh, to actually be Bakugo. But unfortunately, he was able to overpower. Um, Bakugo was able to power uh, overpower Kabushima because he used up too much of his core of his stamina with the uh, hardening and used up way too much in order to guard himself that Bakugo was just able to explode him and, and he lost. Granted, I still feel for my boy though because Kirishima is fucking awesome and you'll see again later why. So Bakugo made it as usual. That's kind of what we expected. So then so then we have uh, so then we have the, the fight between Tenya and and Todoruki. So we have Tenya versus Toto uh, Amida or whatever. T Ida, I'm sorry, I just call him Ida. Ida versus Todoruki. And it turns out that Todoruki wasn't using his like ex extremely full potential because we can obviously tell he used up like a shit ton of it during his fight between with him and Midoriya. So you could tell he was somewhat holding back a little bit. But it turns out that Ten uh, that Ida actually you know pretty much lost because at first it seems like he got it in the bag with his speed and i really did like that whole speed kick thing that he did but then of course what happened is that total rookie got the advantage of freezing his engine and he was able to pretty much knock him and freeze him out and he just couldn't move anymore it was already too late and Ida lost and total rookie advanced so that was actually a pretty cool fight that fight itself was actually pretty damn cool i actually really do like the fact that Ida is getting some pretty cool development. I'm really starting to kind of dig Ida a little bit more. But Todoruki is still my big top favorites when it comes to My Hero Academia. Just saying. And then, of course, we have Bakugo versus um, Tokiyami. Which uh, we have Tokiyami versus uh, Bakugo. And obviously because most of the light weakness that Bakugo pretty much figured out. Uh, uh, Tokiyaki, Tokiyami's weakness. Apparently, he lost, which kind of sucks because Shadow Boys, man. Them Shadow Boys, which, again, goes on my other top favorites as well. But it kind of sucks that Tokiyami lost. I was expecting somewhat of a turnaround when it comes to him, though. But, of course, I read the manga, so I already knew what to expect from this. But, granted, what I did like about this, though, compared to the manga, most of these fights, we didn't really see much of the manga. It was pretty much just, like, 
there, like still images, and then it just like skips some of those fights and just declares the result to the winner. So I really did like how the anime actually expanded with those fights. That was some good shit. And I actually did enjoy this more compared to the manga. How, again, some of the manga's fights were just like these little still images here and there that we read in the panels. But unfortunately, they were just skipped over a bit quickly while Midoriya was having his moment, etc., etc. So I am really glad that the anime did expand a little bit when it comes to those fights, though. I mean, true, they could have done this for the half of the majority of the season. They show, like, you know, at least two fights in one, but make them a little longer, which would have been pretty cool. But no, that's just the way they wanted to do it from the manga and not really DBZ it, I guess, in a way. You know, I guess they could kind of do that if they wanted to, maybe. But anyways, you know, we got that. And finally, we have the finals coming up with Bakugo versus Todoruki. Oh, man. Yo, this oh, next week is going to be fucking lit. I cannot wait for next week's episode. Bakugo versus Todoruki in the finals. I am fucking hyped as hell. Cannot wait for next week's episode. The finale of the uh, sports festival is about to go into its close next week. So I am really excited for that. Um, yeah, and then of course to set up at the end, we found out that Ida called uh, his mother text message him saying, like, look, the, a villain actually pretty much uh, killed your brother. Well, I, we don't know if he's really dead or he's just pretty much beaten off. We don't really know if he's really dead or not. We just got to find out even more when we actually get to the rest of that scenario as well but we'll find out sooner than later but until then that's pretty much how the episode ends we get the introduction and then of course because then while he was explaining you know like all these like because like all these heroes think there's something special and whatnot but in reality they're just like certain gifts like you know he's someone that looks like he really hates um heroes having quirks like he really hates the fact that they're the ones that get more of the attention while people like you know like real warriors like him like stain actually who actually kill people don't get enough of the credit so it's like damn so this dude really just despises heroes for some other reason then we have Kobergiri. we see the black vortex we see him he's right there and he basically tells him look just hold back you are pretty strong but we might need you you know for a while because that's not really the real enemy we're supposed to because look that's not really the real enemy we're supposed to be focusing on he goes yeah the real challenge is the symbol of peace all might and then of course and of course to wrap things up at the very end it looks like he might be the one pulling the strings again not you know we're saying this but we have at the very end shigaraki and shigaraki is right there and he looks at his laptop or his computer's like the hero killer I knew I'd find him. So basically, he was the one that pretty much put him up in order to actually search for him in order to finally kill him once and for all. So overall, that's pretty much it for this episode. Overall, when it comes to the fights and when it comes to the information, the setup with Stain, oh man, I think this uh, episode, uh, because of so much switching back and forth, I guess when it comes to that and the fights. Now, the fights are really good. I think my only complaint was that the fights went on a little bit too quickly than expected. But that's just to say. But everything about it was great. So I'm going to give the episode a 4.5 out of 5. And the reason it's a 4.5 out of 5 is because the only thing is I wish they could have expanded the fights a little bit longer though. I mean they did. They kind of did. But not really as much as I thought. I kind of wish we kind of spent some episodes. Like we could get that and then we get the other fights as well. So we got like a lot of things like set up in the episode. But I think that's the thing too. There's like there's focusing on way too much things going on though. Like we have the fights here. We got the the moment with Midoriya and All Might. So there's a lot of moments. So it's not picture perfect. It's not perfect pacing. So I'll give it about a 4.5 out of 5. Just a great, great plus episode. Really enjoyed it. Stain's introduction. Hype as hell. Cannot wait. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of this week's episode of My Girl Academia Season 2, Episode 1111. See you guys next week for Episode uh, 12. Uh, also, for the manga folks, my apologies that there's no live reaction this week due to the fact that there was no... In case you guys don't know, there was no chapter during that week due to the fact that the manga cut took a week, a unexpected week hiatus. Uh, or just a, a week break or a wake break hiatus, whatever. But don't worry, I'm pretty sure the chapter will be back next week. So I'll see you guys hopefully next week for chapter 141. Live react slash review. Hopefully it'll be up by then. Which I hope everything's okay though. I didn't really hear too much anything at an anime news network. 
So I guess it's just for this one week unexpectedly. Maybe he's just a little sick. But then again, we just have to see. So until then, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe as always. Don't forget to check out my online plugins, my gaming plugins as well. And I'll see you guys for the next one. So peace, soul, love, chicken grease, and the sky's the limit. And my manga fans, case of porn, which we to watch and go beyond. Plus Ultra!